Hello everyone and welcome to my video on how to reshape a Pokemon world, which may be better called how to reshape the Matrix Zero. I want to add a third map to my example world to get ready for the next episode on how to insert buildings. While getting that ready, I decided I also wanted to showcase editing the Matrix Zero in SDSME to show how to rearrange the map placement. That way I don't have to follow the shape of the original Platinum world and can do my own thing. So here's what I'm looking to do. We ended the last tutorial here where I have my two maps inserted, but you can still see bits of the original map around the edges. So I want to add a third map up north here. That will be the base of the first time I've ever made. Testingdon. Then I also want to change the surrounding maps to all be these tree border maps and then raise them up so they are flush with the edges of my map to kind of blend this in a little better. And my hope is that this would make it feel more like my own place instead of this like self-inserted world that sticks out like a sore thumb. And honestly, it's pretty easy to do. This will all be handled inside of SDSME. So let's get that open. Let's see, I have it here in map editing. There we are. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And I will open up the ROM that I ended mapping episode two on. Right here. And it'll think. Find all the maps. And there we go. And now I've shown you this before, but this is the matrix editor. And by default, we're on matrix zero, which is the main overworld. And as I mentioned before, a matrix is basically like a grid that you use to tell the game where a certain map shows up when a world is loaded. For example, if I switch to the map files tab and click map zero zero, that's still my starting hill map. And it's the fact that zero zero is listed at this row and this column that tells the ROM where that map should be loaded. And that's also true for zero zero five, which is now my Northern pool map. So if I want a map to be North of my northern pool, it has to be here. Now you can see that this spot is purple like the rest of these border maps here and says 0173. A purple cell means that that is a border map. This is just a simple map that's meant to be put on the sides of your main maps to help them kind of blend in like the forest maps I show off over here like that. And now 0173 means that it is a forest. There are other ones like 0174, which I think is down here. That is a like a border ocean tile. Whenever I get down here, there you are. So, OK, what I need to do is to turn this border map into a main map cell. And really, I could pick just about any one of these maps. For simplicity, I picked one that was nearby from my testing, which was 004. And changing it is just as easy as clicking on it and typing in 0004. But now when you move a map, you also want to make sure to move its header as well. So if I have this spot and I go to the map headers, I took this one, which is 0334. And I'll just put that here as well, which border maps don't have a header, but I can just add it on by going 0334 like so. Now you'll notice that this spot is still black when I click off of it. And then back on the map file, this spot is still purple. But what should happen is once I click the save current button, I'll be forced back to the map header. But you can see this is now white with 0334 and this is now 004. And that's it. I now have a main map above my two test maps here. And I didn't have to follow the main shape of the world. I didn't have to put it like here or over here. I can put it anywhere I want in these cells. Now it's an important note that you're going to want to hold on to for when we get to episode four on warps. There's actually a problem I'm going to run into because I have chosen map four. So I'm going to refer you back to this video when I talk about that problem. And this is the spot you want to come back to if you're curious about it and how that whole situation could just be avoided if I pick a different map. Now, anyway, as I said, I wanted to have a nice ring of trees around my three maps here. So I need to turn these into a 0173 border map. 
And don't forget this one, 0174, the sneaky one. I have done that before. So I'm going to replace these maps here. And I don't think this is necessary, but I am going to move them to preserve them somewhere else. So I don't forget that I replace them later on. To do that, I can just come up to this spot like that, and I'm just going to put them up off to the side, like 0006. And then I'll do the next one, which will be 0017. And then I will do 0003. And I've already preserved 004 by putting it there, so that's good. But then I've moved the map, so I just want to move the headers. So I put six in number 20. So the header where six was was 0342. So in 20, I will put in 0342. And then one up from that is 0003, which is confusing, but that's the header number. <laughs> that's not the same map number. And then I moved the map 003 up here. And that one uses 0334 as well. Okay, so when I do a save current, they turn white like so. Come back to the map files, they are there. Okay, so now they are preserved and I can replace them in their original spots. And that's just coming here, going uh, 0173. 0173. 0173 And uh, don't forget this one 0173 So that changes from an ocean to a forest Okay And then border maps don't use Any kind of a header So just uh, 000 And 0000 Zero, 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 zero. And that one's already good because it's already a border map. Okay. So then save current. Ha! Ah, and now you can kind of see that my maps are separate from the rest of the world. Same thing on the map tab. Yeah, just like that. But we're not quite done yet because if you look at the game, these forests are much lower than my map. And I want to raise them up so they're flush with this lip that I'm walking on to, to look all nice and fancy. Okay, and to do that, that's just on this tab we've been skipping over here. The border map height. So these numbers around here tell the game how high the map should be rendered at. I guess a starting position. And these heights equate to the same thing you were picking when you drew your map in PDSMS. So if I came over here open up PDSMS there we are file open let's see and this one will be map editing map examples and I'll open up my new version of the northern pool here ha <laughs> this version is so I can walk up north onto my uh, town map but anyway so what I wanted to show with all that is that these numbers equate to these numbers on this bar here. Usually when you draw a map, it's going to start at zero. And then while the map is set to zero, you go into the height view and then you tell it how high you want it above that from there. So really, when you're telling the height of a tile when making a map, you're saying, how high above zero do you want this? Now, if I was to take this, like this one right now is set to 002, that means that this map would be two levels higher than the other two maps that I have so far. And it would add a two to all of these values and appear higher in the game. But it's not really that hard to keep track of, because really just want to remember that when you have a main map, you just want to set its height to zero. And then what we're doing with the border maps around here is telling it how much to raise these maps here, just all together. So I want this map to be flush with my hill here. So the height of my hill is four. Now you would think that would mean that I would come here and go, all right, 
four. But no. So these border maps, what they have is that they go up a half an increment at a time. So zero is still zero, but one is 0 0.5. And then two is one. So what I just have to do is take the height of what I have that I want it to be level with and times it by two. So I need eight. Okay. So then all of these will turn to eight. Just like that. And I can set them all to eight because I have a, a ring of this lip all the way around my map. So it works out pretty good. Okay, so I got all that. I want to save again. But I don't think any colors are changed this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all still the same. And okay, so now the trees are the way that I want it. I now have a map above my northern pool map. So now all I have to do is insert my new maps that will connect them all together to make my new testing world. So we go back to the map files. First I'll go to 005. And I just want to replace this with the new version. That will let me connect to the map up north. Okay, so I just do the same thing that I did in mapping episode 2. And I'll import the 3D model. Let's see. So I'll go inside, find my map, and be this one. Okay, I'll give that error. I can ignore it, like I said before. And then I can go to terrain, and then it remembers that same location, so that's easy. Move permissions, like that. Okay, then come back down to tile set six. There it is. Beautiful. Right, so go ahead and save that one. And I come back to the maps, and now I want to replace this map which is the entrance to the lake. So I'll just come in, 3D model, where I come up one, go to Testington, my town. And then we can ignore that, that's fine. Terrain, Testington, and move permissions. Okay, then come down to tile set six. Okay. And this is going to be the map that I base my town on later to add buildings to for episode three. You can see I use the uh, the base of Jubilee City, and I think it's going to look very nice. Okay, let's make sure these are all in there. Yeah, that looks good. Not okay, so we can go ahead and save current. And all we can do is save a new ROM. So we'll save it right on the desktop. And we'll call this one Let Them Clean 3 Map. Uh, three map. <laughs> there we go. All right, save. Uh, I'll appear behind this. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So I can get these out of the way. Come back to Desmumi. And I will open up that new version. So come here, three map. Okay, so I just want to run through the intro again. Hello, Rowan. Nice to meet you. No. I love your Pokeball. Oh, it's so good. Yep, yep, there you go. Uh, I go through there. What do you do? Yes, I love it. Okay, my boy. Yes, good. And my name is Jay. Okay. And where is my boy? Okay. Now we just go over here. And now that I can get up, you can see that I have my new layout with my ladders up here so you can get to the sides and the trees are all nice and flush to the sides of my map now i can go all the way around oh it looks so nice it's like so good forest up around there and then i can keep going this way come down and see my city oh <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so uh, you got these lines here, but that's not the map maker's fault. What's happening is that if I go to config, 3D settings, I'm using a very basic 3D renderer uh, by default, so I just changed this to, I think this is the best one, and okay. There you go, it still gets a little weird over here on the sides, but uh, that's okay. 
Alright, so we got that, we got our caves ready to go, and I think we are ready to start inserting some buildings. So I'll end this one here. As you can see, it's pretty easy to reshape the world as you want to. And then also, as always, for your reference, I've added these two new versions of my maps into the map editing, map examples, J, here, these two. So that we can follow along if you wish. Because I feel like it's really nice to be able to, to have your test world feel like its own separate place. So, okay, I'll see you guys in the next mapping episode where we'll add some buildings and you have a good night from here. Good night, everybody! <laughs>